It is 11, I'm sorry. Probably direct the microphone back to you. Oh, you mean I have to talk into this thing? Yeah. Oh. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, it is, I want to say 145 because my computer is in Eastern, but people can do the conversion to 1045. Uh, this is a session on updates from the Drupal security team. Uh, if you have questions during this, you can go to slido.com and enter code SECTEAM and just put your questions in there and we will address them as we go through this. Uh, my name is Michael. I am a member of the security working group. Uh, I'm sorry? I don't use the term, but yes. Uh, I'm a member of the security working group. Next to me, I have David Snowpack and Cash. There's another David out there. Uh, are there any other? Nobody else is wearing their hats, so I can't quickly scan the audience and see. Um, we're members of the Drupal security team. Uh, the security team is made up of about 42 people around the world. Uh, we are all, I'm sorry, this window is not big enough. Um, we're mostly a group of volunteers who do work to keep Drupal secure. You probably know us most from the emails we send out on Wednesday in the form of security advisories. Uh, we come from lots of continents, lots of countries, and lots of different types of day jobs. Some of us work for hosting companies, some of us work for the education space, some of us work for Drupal service providers, we've got some nonprofits in there. Um, we're, we are a pretty diverse group from our, our backgrounds. Um, so we do a variety of different things as the security team. We triage reported security issues. That's probably like our primary job of what we do. Uh, we help with security related Drupal initiatives, which I will show off in a second. We coordinate with other open source security teams. Drupal has a large number of third party dependencies. Go look in the vendor directory. Uh, and so we coordinate with those other security teams to help do coordinated disclosure around their security releases. Uh, we read and respond to messages that are sent to us either through email or through our issue tracker, and we track the trends of hacked sites. So we don't actually help with hacked sites, but we like to hear about how sites are getting compromised because it helps us uh, with some metrics around that. There's a couple things that we don't do. We do not proactively find vulnerabilities. Now, that's not to say there aren't members of the security team who don't go out and try to proactively find vulnerabilities. Sam is not here, but uh, he is one of the more prolific people who go out and actually look for vulnerabilities in code. Um, but as a team, we don't go out and proactively find vulnerabilities. If you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> we wish I could do it. <laughs> that was unexpected. I'm sorry. I was. You don't have to. I was waiting for, to see if it was safe to come in the room. Um, Very deceptive. Uh, we don't review maintainers' code, and we don't help fix uh, hacked sites. You feel good that time if you want. Joining us is uh, XJM. And she is a security team member, and I introduced everybody, and a release manager for Drupal 8. Um, kind of. What? I'm uh, glaring, that's all. <laughs> an overview of kind of the flow chart of how, how work happens within the team is we'll get a vulnerability reported to us. There'll be some initial triage that's done to make sure it's a valid vulnerability. Um, once we've confirmed it's a valid vulnerability, we'll actually uh, include the maintainers of the responsible code. So if it's a contrib module, the maintainers of the contrib module. If it's a part of core, the appropriate subsystem maintainers. And then there's kind of, it doesn't show it on that chart, but there's kind of a loop in fixing the vulnerability. We'll get a patch ready to go. Once there's a patch ready to go and signed off on, we'll coordinate on drafting the email, the security advisor that goes out on Wednesday. We'll choose a Wednesday to handle that release and we then send that out to the community and hopefully people update their sites. Um, we release security updates on Wednesday. Our, new, our window starts at about 4 p.m., uh, I'm sorry, noon Eastern, 4 p.m. UTC, and goes until about 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, 
you know, with security advisories, we encourage maintainers and we, and, and in core, we make sure that the advisories contain the minimum amount needed to fix the release. We don't want to actually fix uh, bugs in a security advisory. We want to make these easy to up, uh, update your sites with as least dependencies as required and as least. And to minimize the chance that um, one of those bug fixes will actually accidentally break your site, which would then disincentivize you from updating to the security release. We want you to update to the security release all the time immediately. Uh, you can follow us to, that's very loud and feeding back on me. Uh, you can follow us. Uh, the best way to follow us is on your Drupal.org profile. <laughs> click the edit page and under newsletters, click the security uh, release. There's also Twitter. There's also RSS feeds. Um, there is also uh, Slack. Uh, the security team is involved with a large number of other Drupal, Drupal ecosystem uh, programs. The Drupal 7 Extended Support Program, Drupal Stewart, the Automatic Updates Initiative, and Drupal 6 Long-Term Support. If you're interested in joining the security team, uh, if you go to security.drupal.org forward slash join, it'll actually give you another link to click on that is much too long to put on the bottom of a slide. Um, uh, and these are some of the requirements in joining. As some of you may be aware, Drupal 7 is reaching end of life. Uh, once Drupal 7 reaches end of life, the security team will no longer be providing security advisories for it. There'll be no more core patches made on the uh, core repo, and it will no longer be supported at the community, by the community at large. Uh, there are some solutions for this, though. Uh, Drupal 7 extended support vendors will be, uh, Drupal 7 extended support will be provided by vendors. Um, if you're interested in becoming a vendor, here is a link you can go to. And as of now, we luckily have two vendors who have already been approved. Uh, that's my drop wizard and tag one. What time is it? Okay, we're doing great on time. Um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about briefly are some security best practices. There's a large number of sessions here at DrupalCon that go over this material. Uh, but I'm going to quickly go over these, and I'm going to use a metaphor to do these. And just a quick show of hands, how many people brush their teeth in the last 24 hours? And how many people would just, out of curiosity, think it would be okay to just brush their teeth like once a month or once a year? No one? Oh, maybe I should put my hand down. Um, Brushing your teeth is a best practice. We all agree this. We all brush our teeth for a variety of reasons. It prevents bad breath. It prevents cavities. Um, it's good hygiene. Uh, we would never think it would be OK to occasionally brush our teeth. Uh, security isn't a checklist. You can't just you know, check the box and be done. You have to continually work at security. Uh, it should be part of your um, weekly monthly process. Uh, when you deploy new code, when you make changes to your system, you are potentially changing your site's risk factor. And as a result, you should evaluate what that change is. Uh, you know, within my day job, I have security auditors that knock on my door, I don't know, maybe once every nine months or so. And they ask questions and I answer them. But if all I did was pay attention to them once every nine months, I'd probably have a lot more sites compromised than I do. Um, Automatic updates is upcoming. Uh, there is an initiative on that. If you're interested in automatic updates, please join us on uh, Friday. We will be sprinting on automatic updates in core. There was a session yesterday on that that was recorded. I think it was recorded. Uh, covering that, I'm not going to go into too much details on that now. Uh, Drupal Stewart is a new service from the Drupal Association and the security team. Uh, I'm going to briefly go through what Drupal Steward is, and then I'd like to just turn this over to questions for everybody to ask. That's really the point of this session is to ask questions of us. Um, Drupal Steward is a web application firewall that protects sites from certain vulnerabilities before it is the vulnerability is disclosed and the update is released. So there's often this gap 
The security team publishes a fix, say 1 p.m. Eastern on a Wednesday, but 1 p.m. Eastern in your local time zone is 3 a.m. And so either you have to wake up and patch your site, or you have to take the risk and wait till 9 a.m. the next morning to patch your site. Drupal Stewart attempts to solve some of that uh, with a web application firewall. Um, a web application firewall works by filtering requests before they hit your server. So you have the internet, people making requests to your website, which is kind of where cache is sitting, and as the, as the requests come through, the web application firewall in the middle looks at those requests and decides whether or not they should pass or not pass. Um, and if they should pass, it lets them through, and if they shouldn't pass, it basically blocks the request and sends a message back to the user. Um, this, doing this in this way lets us uh, prevent um, sites from having to be on red alert for like waiting for that patch, as I mentioned earlier. There's a, unfortunately a couple limitations with this. Um, this only is gonna apply to highly critical core vulnerabilities at least to start with. And there are some types of uh, vulnerabilities that actually cannot be mitigated with a WAF. Uh, and so this won't actually help them. Um, so how does this work? Uh, and before I get into this, please do not take pictures of this panel uh, without asking first. Um, and well, actually, let me just rephrase that. Please do not take pictures of this panel. The slides will be posted on the session note at the end of the uh, session today. So how does this work? Well, security team identifies that a reported vulnerability is a uh, highly critical and mass exploitable. It has to meet both of those requirements. Uh, for example, SA Core 2018-002 was highly critical and mass exploitable. The security team determines whether or not this vulnerability can be mitigated by a WAF, as not all vulnerabilities can be. And it can, it could have been mitigated by a WAF in this instance. And the security team will release a PSA, which we typically do for all highly critical mass exploitable vulnerabilities. And it will indicate on the PSA whether or not the, uh, the, the vulnerability will be covered by Drupal Stewart. Uh, the Drupal Stewart WAF rules will be communicated to the partner, to our, our vendor partners, and put into monitor only mode. And so what that'll mean is that we'll get, uh, it won't actually block any traffic, but we'll get hits on what would have been blocked. That helps us refine our understanding of the vulnerability, but also make sure that the rules that we're gonna push out don't break sites, because that would be bad. Um, security team and the partners review these rules, we make refinements, and Prior to the release, the WAF rules get switched into an enforcing mode so that we will actually start enforcing those rules as they come through. And the security team and partners then push that out. Um, the pricing on this is uh, broken down into three tiers. These three tiers will likely be renamed. There is a community tier where we're targeting between 100 and 250 a year. This is for smaller sites. Uh, there's a standard tier, which is for non-enterprise hosted sites that will be available through a, a trusted partner. And then there's the enterprise tier, which are for your uh, hosting companies. They're all a little bit different. The enterprise tier actually can do a little bit more than a typical WAF because they're uh, hosting companies. They can actually inspect the PHP request. They can do other things with the vulnerability itself. Um, why isn't this free? This is a great question we get. Uh, code is free and always will be free. Uh, Drupal is licensed under the GPL, code is free. But this is not code, this is a service that's provided by vendors. Uh, and there's costs to running this service. Um, the patch is always the best way to mitigate all risk. Uh, Drupal Stewart is kind of a, I am feedbacking a little bit. Drupal Stewart is a, is a, uh, is a stopgap mechanism. It's, it's better than nothing, but it is not a complete mitigation. The patch is. Um, why can't we share this with everybody? Well, unfortunately, the nature of those WAF rules actually will, uh, might disclose exploit paths on the vulnerability, which is why we can't just share the rule with everyone. However, once this is, starts to get mass exploited and is publicly reported, we absolutely can share it with other people. Uh, and probably through uh, there's a, not quite sure how to pronounce that, S-I-W-E, 
COS is a hosting platform uh, that is designed to share, among other things, firewall rules for known vulnerabilities. Um, if you wanted to be a partner, there are some requirements in this. There is a URL to get more information on this, and if you'd like to be added to the potential partner list, there's a list there to be emailed. Um, you know, uh, but I'd like to take the la last 15 minutes of the session and see if there's any questions from the audience. You're free to submit these through the Slido platform, as well as just come up to the microphone and ask questions. Can I interject something? Of course. Um, since I was pressured into coming and sitting up here, I thought I would add one update that Michael did not include in his presentation. Um, another thing that the Drupal security team has uh, improved in the past year is that minor releases for Drupal 8 core now receive a full year of security coverage instead of only six months. So if any of you have had a Drupal 8 site for a couple of years now, you might have encountered a problem where, uh, you know, on some random date like, you know, October 4th, um, Drupal 8.4 is scheduled to be released and Drupal, you know that Drupal 8.3 is going to lose security coverage like almost as soon as this comes out. So suddenly you have to scramble to get your site updated and then maybe there were things in Drupal 8.4 that were disruptive and breaking. I'm using that as an example because we actually broke Drush with that release. Um, so after our experiences with that, we changed the policy so that um, there's, so there's two miners that have security coverage at the same time. There's the actively supported bug fix minor release, which right now is Drupal 8.6, and then we're also, at the same time, providing security releases for Drupal 8.5. So um, you have a, f instead of it being like you have to get your update done on a specific date, you now have six months in which your business can plan ahead and schedule, okay, we're gonna do our minor version update for Drupal core, um, in this time window that makes sense in our business's practices, our university schedule, whatever. Uh, and so I encourage you if you're, um, you know, if you're doing your update to Drupal 8.7 coming up on May 1st, um, just keep in mind also that you can continue to run Drupal 8.6 safely until December 2020 and uh, just plan to do the Drupal 8.7 update at some time that works for you between now and then, so. Thank you. Yeah, hi, uh, question about the, the Drupal Steward. How is, it, how is the traffic routing handled that, that you are protected by the WAF? I'm still uh, kind of confused by that point. So uh, we are looking, we, we've currently sent out RFPs on that to oh. determine what the, what, what the community tier is okay. um, and the individual tier, but you will likely uh, route your traffic through a CDN provider. Okay. And so that CDN provider will take care of it. For the hosting companies who, are, who become the enterprise partners, they will direct you on how to route their traffic or they may just take care of it for you as I look over to one of those. Um, so right. it'll be, it'll be, you know, it'll, yeah. determined that way. Yeah. So the idea would be you'd, you'd go with one of these companies, if you're part of your steward, you stay with this company and, and continually have your, your traffic passing and then, yep. okay, gotcha, thank you. you. You could route your traffic when the PSA comes out and stop routing it afterwards, yeah. but that's it's messy. a lot of work to do. Yeah. Potentially. Sure. Okay, thank you. That clears it up. Um, we did get a question through Slido. Oh, there's a lot of questions through Slido. Um, I just wanted to say to you and the team, you are awesome. Nice work. Thank you. So appreciate the security team. Sets Drupal apart. Security, what, I'm assuming this is, what security module should we all be using? Um, TFA is one of them. There's a security review module that comes to mind. There's the content security policy module that helps protect against cross-site scripting. Setkit. Setkit. Paranoia in Drupal 7. Paranoia in Drupal 7 is a great module, not really needed as much in Drupal 8 because we removed the ability to run PHP code in Drupal 8. Um, thank you to whoever did that. Uh, How does a contrib module maintainer get security coverage? That is a great question. Uh, there is an outdated project application queue mechanism that is there. It actually is still being reviewed. There are still people who follow that queue. Uh, if you feel your project though has stalled, for now you can email the security team and we can help bump that project along. Uh, our long-term goal is to replace that with a more interactive format such as code examples and a quiz and it's an automated process as opposed to what's there now. Um, how does the security team work? 
How does the security team work when there's a vulnerability on softwares that are powering Drupal like PHP and Apache and third party tools? Uh, security team doesn't really get into the scope of what you're running on your web server. Um, you know, I've got another slide that I didn't give here that if hosting is not really your business, you shouldn't be hosting your own site. Um, you know, it's, it, I realize that might be a somewhat <laughs> controversial thing to say, but uh, you know, you're, we, we all choose our lines of work and for most of us, we are not you know, hosting providers. And so if you are trying to host your own site, you have to worry about maintaining the security statuses of your servers, you have to worry about the uh, updates of all that software, availability, and it's most oftentimes more economical to find someone to host that site for you. I will say though, um, sometimes when there is a particular kind of vulnerability that's discovered in PHP, and the whole PHP community has to respond to it, we have done um, security releases in those situations to um, add support to Drupal uh, that, that protects Drupal from the kind of exploit that's there. That's happened a couple times in the past. Um, and I think there was also a question about third party tools there. I, that could have been referring to third party dependencies. Um, so for example, Drupal 7 depends on jQuery. Uh, Drupal 8 depends on a lot of stuff, including you know, Symfony, um, jQuery, Guzzle. Wow, there's lots of Zen framework components and stuff that we have dependencies on. Um, so when upstream uh, projects have a security release, if the security release uh, is directly exploitable in Drupal, then we will try to do a coordinated release with them and do a new release of Drupal core at the same time that updates to the, the fixed version of the dependency. Um, if the dependency does not, is not directly exploitable in Drupal, then uh, we don't do a, a Drupal core update for it. So I'm not sure, in case that was the question, I just wanted to make sure we have the answer for that too. Thanks. Quick question about secure, uh, modules that are covered by security advisory and that aren't. So, uh, you know, I, I know that stable releases are, are covered, but often there are cases where an alpha release is there or a dev release and has patches that are working. I guess my question is how, how frequently are those modules checked to see, okay, now it's covered or is it just kind of semantic versioning to say, okay, this version works, we scanned it, and now it's, it's covered by the policy? How, how does that work in terms of what is not covered? So the security team doesn't um, proactively review modules. The, the project application queue was an attempt to somewhat do that as it, as it flowed through. Um, but for the most part, when you click on the report security vulnerability link on the side of project pages, we direct you where you should post that vulnerability based on both is the project covered and is there a stable release. Um, there's probably some improvements we could do around there. Um, we also don't allow projects to opt into coverage if there's an open tagged release or an open tagged issue with the security flag on it. Okay. So it's, it's really a question of whether something goes through the security team's process or just happens in the public, right? That's really the only thing that's right. different. But if you it, don't it's find on any, the it, module maintainer to just mark yeah, a stable right, release. I think that's, that's it, exactly. Yeah. So someone has to actively say, wait a minute, we're not really vulnerable. Here's, you know, exactly. Okay. And, and well, at that point, um, well, they, they may or may not have security vulnerabilities, but um, by tagging their stable release, if they've, if they've been eligible or to and opted into security coverage, um, at, th at that point, like all of their stuff will, will be considered a security issue if it's reported and handled in private according to our process. Yeah, so something saying that it's covered by the security team does not mean that it doesn't have vulnerabilities. I think yeah. it's probably safe to make the complete opposite assumption <laughs> that every module has security vulnerabilities. Yes. Right. Like, if you just look at the vulnerabilities that the team publishes, we're publishing vulnerabilities primarily for like the most commonly used things, right? Like we're, you know, you, you could say like, well, Views has been around forever and uh, tons of people have looked at that code and everyone depends on it, but like we're still going to keep finding security vulnerabilities in Views, right? But are, so I guess the question is, I understand in Core you're gonna actively monitor it, but for those other modules you said you don't, you don't actively, uh, you know, unless a vulnerability is reported, you won't actively audit those other modules. So that's not the job of the security team. Right, that's why Our job is to, to maintain exactly. this process. Uh, other people in the community are right. constantly checking contrib and core and looking for gotcha. security vulnerabilities. And when they find them, they come to us and then it goes through the process. Okay. Great, thank you. Uh, while you're coming up with the microphone, is there a good method for assessing the vulnerabilities of custom modules? Um, 
There are some tools that try to automate this process, but honestly, the best method is to do a code review. Uh, find someone to help you do a code review. Read over your own code. Uh, you know, I typically will do the thing where I'll go through and explain my module to a fictitious person who's not in the room and just walk through what I'm doing out loud and why I'm doing it, and I will often find a lot of things that way. Um, but doing a code review, uh, especially doing a code review of code you didn't personally write is really the best way to find security vulnerabilities. Uh, Peter and I just got done with a session that uh, did not get recorded, but the slides are available entitled Cracking Drupal that shows a lot of the common patterns that introduce security vulnerabilities, and so that's a great place to start. I think I would just throw in there, if, if you're not familiar with the coder module, it has uh, some rules for um, PHP's code sniffer and it will help find some of the very, very basic security vulnerabilities, which are more just misuse of the API. So I would consider it a very, very low bar, but you can run it against your code just to kind of get started. Hi, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the gray area of what your charge is in addition to what he was saying, was that when Drupal 8 was first released, the encrypt module was actually really far from actually being ready. We had remained in beta, I think, for almost about a year or something. For my organization, which has to remain strictly HIPAA compliant, we had a lot of problems actually trying to use it. And there was a lot of questions whether Drupal was secure and secure between people who are not familiar with open source learning community. It just seems to me, I understand this is probably a gray area for, for, for many of us to understand, and you guys are very clear what your charge is, but it also seems to me that you have actually have a great deal of influence to actually to make sure that these things are actually maybe up to snuff, or at least for a release. Um. I would point out that there are tens of thousands of contributed modules for Drupal Core, and we have a volunteer team of 30-some people. Like, yeah. the, the scope of work is enormous. I, 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 so I, I guess the question is, are you, um, we, we try to, I think that we, we try to influence by, by communicating best practices and sharing with the community what things are, but any contri I mean, any is so, so. Is your concern about this specific module, which was a security well, improvement it's, it's that was important? Well, it's an encrypt module, which is used right, for yeah. security and securing of data. So, but also at the same time, it wasn't necessarily ready. I understand kind of what That's you're saying. That's on those project maintainers, really. For a lot like, of people to understand, like, but it would actually make things actually a lot more uh, assuring for a lot of people. Yep. The best thing to do in that situation is is to get involved in in that project queue, find out. Um, from the maintainer, like just ask simply ask the question, what's holding you back from creating a Drupal 8 version of this module? Um, and then if it's something that's important to your organization, see if there's a way you can help them. Do they need money? Do they need developer time? What kind of support do they need? Um, contributed module authors are, you know, they're, vo they're volunteers a lot of the time doing things in their spare time. And, and they, you know, the best thing to do is find out if you can help. Say, I, I want to use this module in Drupal 8. How, you know, what will it take? Okay. Then just a quick follow, are you guys involved also with, from security aspect of uh, the release of Drupal 9? Well, so, so I, I guess what, what you, so Drupal 9 is going to be basically exactly the same as Drupal 8 with mm -hmm. deprecated code layers removed. Um, starting with Drupal 8, we've adopted a process called um, the continuous upgrade path, which is a concept and practice that we uh, are sh have borrowed from, learn from Symfony. Uh, in essentially, Drupal 9 is not a complete rewrite of code. Drupal 9 is Drupal 8 with deprecated code removed and updates to core dependencies. Um, and I will say that uh, core, the, the Drupal core product, like new code, we, we do try to, we, we take into account security when we add new code and features to the module. It's not to say that there's not vulnerabilities, there always will be, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's an you know, ongoing process to find and report them. But it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be something where we're going to, it's going to be like Drupal 9 is an entirely new thing. In fact, Drupal 9 is probably going to be the safest release of Drupal 8 because it will have no new features in it. Okay. It'll be exactly the same as Drupal 8.9 uh, with just except that APIs that, that were deprecated will be gone. And so hopefully we'll also have less of the problem that you described where a module you needed was not available at first in the Drupal 7 to 8 update um, because, because of this continuous upgrade path deprecation process. Um, it makes it a lot easier for module developers to write code that's compatible with both Drupal 8 and 9 at the same time. And so that means it's, it's less work for them to be compatible with the next branch of Drupal. They'll have, they can do the work at a time that works for them in their lives and their schedules, uh, rather than having to be, oh no, Drupal 9 is going to be released now, let's all rush and I have to find time to, for this 
volunteer thing that I posted on the internet a while ago, get it upgraded to triple nine, it should be a lot easier for them too. So hopefully we'll see less of that with this release. All right. Thank you so much. I, I, I think the stat is that 40 something percent of uh, top X modules are currently Drupal 9 compatible. Already. Uh, as, of, as of a week ago okay. when, the, when that stat was run. Um, can, can I add something to the first part of your question? Sure. Um, just like about the sort of conception or misconception of what the security team does. Uh, the security of Drupal is the responsibility of the whole Drupal community because it's an open source project. Mm -hmm. In order to do the sort of coordinated disclosure that we want to do for Drupal, which improves its security, some information needs to be kept confidential. And in an open source community, how do you do that? Um, because it, you know, it's, the code is available, everything's out in public, and the way that we do that is by making a small security team to handle just the things that need that confidentiality. The majority of security work in Drupal is to be done by the whole community in public, and our job is just managing that component that needs to be confidential, if, if that answers your question. It does, and there's other questions that we can go on. I know it's a long lengthy discussion, but I'm satisfied with what you're telling me. It's, it's, it's cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So unfortunately, it is, uh, I want to say 2.15, but it's not 2.15. It is 11.15, and uh, we need to move on because the session is over, but we will be hanging around. The security team typically wears hats that are either white, black, or blue. Uh, so if you have a follow-up question, feel free to find one of us. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Thanks for the questions.